when it's nebula season, everybody wants to shoot in Hubble palette. It is not only a beautiful aesthetic, it is also a way of showing scientifically meaningful information. And let's be real, some nebulas just look objectively better in those colors. The problem is if you're shooting with a one-shot color camera, getting there is not easy. Why? Because it is really hard to separate hydrogen from sulfur as both those signals normally end up in the red channel. The brand new Optolong L Synergy filter is designed to fix exactly this problem. So today we're going to look at what makes it different, test it out in the field and see how it actually performs on the stars. My name is Lutz and you're watching the Space Koala. The L Synergy is the latest filter in Optolong's well-known L series. This line has been around for a while and it includes some of the most popular dual band filters out there. It started with the original L Enhanced, then moved on to the narrower L Extreme and later we got the ultra narrow band L Ultimate. After that, Optolong also released the L Para, which was more of a wide filter, kind of like a modern version of the L Enhanced. Up until now though, all of those filters were essentially the same idea. Capture hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen would land in the red channel of your camera while oxygen would split across the green and blue channels. That setup was great for a lot of things, but not if you wanted to create a true Hubble palette. Why? Because the sulfur signal was missing. People tried workarounds usually with pixel math, creating what is often called a faux Hubble palette. And while those images could look nice, they weren't scientifically accurate because they didn't actually contain sulfur data. The colors and general vibe might be similar, but this is very different from doing an actual Hubble palette. There's a reason it's called that. It was designed for the Hubble Space Telescope, where astronomers needed a way to separate emission lines that all sit close together in the red part of the visible spectrum. Both sulfur-2 and hydrogen alpha are deep red, so if you just render them as is, the sulfur completely disappears under the much stronger hydrogen signal. You might see vague outlines of structures, but visually there's no real quantitative information. To fix that, NASA blue shifted the wavelengths into different RGB channels while keeping their order. Sulfur at the highest wavelength mapped to red, hydrogen slightly below mapped over the green, and oxygen mapped to blue. That's what allows us to actually distinguish the structures with our eyes instead of just seeing one giant red blob. Without true sulfur data though, you're not making a Hubble palette, you're just recoloring hydrogen and oxygen. And now with a monochrome camera and individual filters, getting true sulfur data has always been straightforward. You just capture it through a dedicated S2 filter, but with color cameras it hasn't been practical because sulfur only falls on a small fraction of the sensor thanks to the Bayer matrix, making it very inefficient. That's why until now most OSC users simply didn't bother with sulfur. The L Synergy would like to change that. Like other dual band filters, it lets in two emission lines at once, one that goes to the red pixels of your camera and oxygen, which shows up in the green and blue pixels. But here's the big difference. Instead of hydrogen in the red channel, this filter gives you sulfur. That means you're still using the full sensor efficiently, but now you finally have access to both sulfur and oxygen in a single shot. And right now there aren't many options like this on the market. The main competitor would be Ascar's Color Magic filter, which also offers a sulfur and oxygen combination. But beyond that, choices are very limited. Limited. The L Synergy is meant to be a natural companion to the L Extreme. Both have a 7 nanometer bandwidth, with the L Extreme giving you hydrogen and oxygen, and the L Synergy giving you sulfur and oxygen. 7 nanometers is narrow enough to help under light polluted skies, but also in the dense star fields of the Milky Way, where filters with wider band passes tend to struggle. Now you don't have to stick to the L Extreme. My personal favorite from the whole series is actually the L Ultimate. Not only is it ultra narrow, which blocks out even more of the unwanted light, but it also 
it never produces halos around stars and that's honestly amazing for a filter like this i think it could make a really strong pairing with the l synergy that said for today's test i'll stick to the recommended setup pairing the l synergy with the l extreme so we have a perfectly matched set that means seven nanometer hydrogen and oxygen from the l extreme and seven nanometers of sulfur and oxygen from the l synergy for this test i'm using my imx 571 based camera the asi 2600 mc air the all-in-one version with the built-in asi air i've got it mounted in a filter wheel which makes swapping filters really easy of course you don't need a filter wheel a filter drawer works just fine and if you don't have either you can always thread the filter directly into your corrector or adapter the only downside is that you would have to re-rotate your camera each time to keep the same orientation. I'm pairing the camera with my Ascar FRA600 refractor, this time with the 07x reducer. That brings the effective focal length down to 420 millimeters, and that gives me a wide field of view. I went this way because I've wanted for a long time to capture a Hubble palette image of the North American Nebula together with the Pelican Nebula in the same frame. It is a white subject and this setup will be perfect for that. It is just a matter of personal preference, but I do think that Nebula photos, especially Hubble palette photos, often look best when you're zoomed in on a part of the structure rather than just having the entire nebula sitting in the middle of the frame. That's just the approach I like to take with these images. All that's left to do is wait for the sky to clear up and get dark, which is supposed to happen tonight, and then start shooting with the filters and then head back to the computer to see what we got. Okay, let's have a look at the images. The sky did clear up as promised, and while my time-lapse attempt didn't really work out, I did get the images. So let's go through them together, both the raw frames, some halo tests, and of course the processed result. Here's a raw frame taken with the L Synergy filter. This is straight out of the telescope, uncalibrated, and if you're used to multi-band filters, the first thing you'll notice is that it's not red. Normally, with a hydrogen plus oxygen filter like the L Extreme, hydrogen dominates so much that everything just comes out red. But with the L Synergy, we're combining sulfur and oxygen, and sulfur is a much weaker signal, so the image immediately looks more balanced, lots of green, blue, turquoise tones from the oxygen, and you can clearly spot which regions actually contain more sulfur. On a single frame, there's not too much to analyze. The stars look fine, nothing alarming. Here's the stack, 28 times 10 minutes with the L Synergy. A similar look, but just with better signal than noise. Even on its own, it works fine as a bicolor filter, but of course most of us want that full balanced Hubble palette look. So to see how that would look, I also shot in parallel with the L Extreme on another telescope. Uh, this shows how hydrogen dominates with the L Extreme. Oxygen is much harder to bring out without pushing the data. To combine them, I did a straightforward workflow. I took the red channel from the L Synergy to use as sulfur and the red channel from the L Extreme to use as hydrogen. Then I kept the green and blue channels from both filters. I saved them separately and I integrated them to form the oxygen channel. Finally, I combined the three masters into an SHO image. I did a basic color calibration to fix the white balance, and I also did a simple auto stretch. I also separated the stars since they came out magenta with this data. I used the stars from the original master and just desaturated them slightly. Not pure white, just more natural. In the future, I might replace them with true RGB stars for an even cleaner result. So the filter performed great, but how does it compare to alternatives? The closest thing on the market that I have access to is the Ascar Color Magic Kit, which also pairs a hydrogen plus oxygen filter with a sulfur plus oxygen filter. On paper, the Ascar has a slight advantage because it is six nanometers instead of seven. But when I actually tested the halos, the story was very different. Here's a stack of five 10 second shots of the star Deneb taken with the L Synergy. Very clean, no noticeable halos. 
And then here's the same exact test with the Escar Color Magic Sulfur Oxygen filter. We can see that here we clearly have a visible halo. It is not horrible considering how bright the star is, but it is more than noticeable. This is similar to the older filters that were prone to halos, optolungs, newer filters like the L Ultimate and the L Para have reduced this issue and the L Synergy seems to follow that trend. So between these two filters, I would personally pick the Optolung regardless of the tiny bandwidth difference because halos bother me and are near impossible to remove in post. If you don't mind halos, which I know some people don't, you may decide differently. So overall, the L Synergy worked as expected with no issues. I tested it alongside the L Extreme because that's the pairing Optolong is suggesting, but personally, I will probably use it with the L Ultimate in the future since that's a narrower filter with better halo performance. And I really hope that this is just the beginning. It would be fantastic if Optolong extended their whole L series into the Sulfur line or even made DSLR clip versions like the one of the L Enhance and then a narrower option would also be very welcome. For now, the L Synergy provides a straightforward way to achieve a true Hubble palette with a one-shot color camera. The filter is currently not yet available to purchase as of filming this. I will update the description with a link as soon as it is released. Right now it is still in the testing phase and Optolong asked for a feedback, which for me has been really positive. If I receive confirmation on the expected price, I will put that on the screen. Otherwise, I will just add that in the description later as soon as it is available. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed this, consider subscribing to the channel. And as always, until next time, I wish you clear skies.